says, have they not seen our signs in the horizons and within themselves? So God is actually communicating to us. Right? Now, we believe the Quran is his direct speech, right? So he's actually communicating with us. It's not some feeling that we have. This uh, is some direct communication. Like it's direct. Well, it's direct communication. So you hear that? No, not hear it, but like it's in the scripture. But we know it's his speech verbatim, okay. right? And we have evidences for this. But he uh, he asked us this question: Do you not see that uh, our signs and the horizons are within yourselves? Because if you actually look at it, even with nature, all of this stuff has to be studied. So there requires intellect and you know. And, physics. and physics. physics, yeah, you've got you got all of this stuff, and the, and this stuff, people, there are laws for it, and laws cannot be put in place without a lawmaker. So this this comes by natural reasoning, right? And this is what we call natural theology, essentially, right? Where you reason with regards to the existence of God. So when we when people so say, when, yes, yeah, sure. So when you, you say it's a creator that created. Everything. 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 Like the, the earth, but if you live on everything. Everything. And when was that done? Well, that the time we don't know. Now, and obviously, it couldn't. That? Just him. Just him. And what made him? Him. Nothing. Or him so. Him? No. What made him to create something? He wanted to. So the thing is, so when what, you have he the had when a it, feeling or something that he wanted to create something because yes, of course he has nothing. feelings. Yeah, Allah. Yeah, Allah. We call him Allah. Um, I'm sure you have heard the name of Allah. So Allah obviously has a will, he has feelings, you know, it's described in the, in the Quran, it's described in our hadith sources that Allah feels uh, love, he feels hate, he feels jealousy, he has emotion. So he wanted to create everything, right? Yeah. But what triggered him to create it? The wisdom of why he created everything is known to him, okay? Only known to him. Only known to him. Yeah, we're, we're not in a position, we can ask the question, but we're not in a, For example, there is a story in the Quran where he decided he wanted to create mankind. Now the angels asked him, they were like, why do you want to create a, a creation that's going to cause bloodshed and corruption on the, on, the earth, on the earth? Now it's not because they knew that we were going to do that, there was a prior creation that did that. So they were going off previous experience. And he said to them, I know what you don't know. Right? So he didn't answer them. He said, this is in my wisdom. I've made that choice for a reason. That reason is not known to you. So likewise, why he created the cosmos in the first place, it's not, it's not for us to, uh, to dictate why. We can ask the question, but ultimately we won't know. He has not disclosed that information to us. And he didn't write that down in the book? No, because ultimately, us knowing why he created it doesn't benefit us. What benefits us is what our purpose, because he created us for a purpose. And it's very important for people to have a purpose and know, you know, one hundred percent, and they feel safe, and yeah. then, you know, and, and you have community with it. I think it's very good. Agreed. And the thing is, that this this idea of purpose is natural to us, I and mean, this is what we refer to as exactly. a natural inclination, yeah. something that's instilled within us, and we long to seek our purpose. Now, the thing is, that question. Allah answers for us in the Quran. Yeah. He says, "Indeed, we have created the ma uh, mankind and jinn to worship me." Now that, when I speak, to, uh, sometimes I speak to people and they're thinking, well, that sounds egotistic. He's created people just so that he can be worshipped. You know, it sounds like egotistic. But then we, I ask the question, what is worship? Why did he ask us to worship him? Is it because it benefits him? Because he was still God before we were even here. So surely worship doesn't benefit him. Who does it benefit? Us. Because it's part of our, it's part of our purpose. So if it's our purpose, it benefits us. So what is this worship? And people get bogged down with worship. Oh, I've got to be strict and this. No, worship is your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. In Islam, we say that your worship is day-to-day -day life. When you smile, it's a charity. That's worship. Yeah. Because you're being good. When you look after your parents, this is worship. Kindness to other people. Kindness to other people. Yeah. No, I don't now, get it. I don't, uh, I mean, I don't have, yeah. you know, any, I mean, I think it's very beautiful for every, you know, mm. every person to like find that, purpose mm. and have a strong belief that gives you the comfort yeah. of life and afterlife or whatever it looks like and a community with people. You know? I agree. And there's many, I, you know, you can see it here, many, many religions everywhere in the world that give people that comfort. Agreed. And this is where I come to the uniqueness of Islam. Because I agree with you, many people, many uh, people who follow different faiths, they find that peace, that comfort, they're good people, yeah. you know. But are they fulfilling their purpose? Now, when Allah says to worship me, he's referring to a specific idea and specific concept of God, right? 
So naturally, that already makes creates a distinction between people who are actually worshiping God and people who are feeling good about what they do in their life and and being overall good people. But isn't that good that every you know that there are so of, many options of it for people to like no find because their in, purpose because in the end the reason Allah should be yeah just take Allah as an example yeah should be and this happy is and, and comforted if other people feel a comfort even though it might not be it might be the same and, same God and they the might thing, just call it different you know? and this is I, I agree with you like yeah. for example the Christians believe in the Father yeah. now. If they believe in the Father, we have no issue with that because we believe that they refer they are referring to Allah but in a, in a different name, right, or a different title rather. They call him Yahweh, but they worship men and women, uh, you know, a man besides him. And we say that's not what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you to worship a man because a man is like you. Why do you want to? Like, it's like me trying to worship you. Well, what's so good about you? I mean, no offense, but you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, but God is the because He created us. We are essentially the product and God is the manufacturer, to put us in an analogy. So naturally the manufacturer knows what's best for the product. So, right, so he knows what's best for us, he knows what's worse for us. So naturally his guidance is going to be the best guidance. Now I can come to you for advice on certain matters and stuff, but ultimately, where is this, where is your advice coming from? Yeah, from the same book, I guess. Yeah, yeah if it's coming from the same book, then I know it's from God. If it's not coming from, then I need to sort of weigh the pros and cons. But as soon as I, and this is why I say Islam is, we have a unique point in Islam where we don't go based off just doing good and just believing for the sake of believing. We establish evidences. And this is why we say, when you said, why doesn't Allah or God create, you know, give something that aligns with everyone? Oh, no, I don't mean that. I, mm. I think I think it's great that you know mm. people find comfort in a god or in yes. uh, worshiping something mm. that gives them comfort for their life and mm. what might happen afterwards. And I think there can be coexistence of different beliefs. They Agree. Can co coexist. They can coexist, know, but they can never. Peacefully. That's among people. Yeah. But as religions, no two religions can be tr simultaneously true yeah, because they because they, they know, oppose they, each other. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that, that's and, they, and and unfortunately that's where they, the fighting uh, yeah, exactly, occurs when yeah. when extremism happens on both sides. But if you open to that and say but okay, you've... well you you might you might think yeah, you like know, it. they might have whoever might have a wrong belief, but that's yeah. not for me to judge, you know. So I let them be whatever no. they might figure it out at some point in their I agree, life. but as we know, we all have our biases. So I as a Muslim, I'm going to think that I have the right the truth. And I'm going to tell people that it's the truth. Well, otherwise you would be like, if you think you have the wrong... Yeah, exactly. I want, I want to say it. Do something about it, right? Exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, if God existed and he wanted the best for everyone, do you not think that he will give something that's universal? Yeah, that's why I think all religions, and I don't want to offend anybody, of are course. the same. Because they believe just in, uh, in something similar. They call it different and they have maybe different, you know, a, a different structure around it to... Uh, your to make, make it people like the same, but I think they have like... Your observation is partly true. Because at the base level, yes, every religion has this belief in one God. Yeah. And they have... Not every, uh, actually, every. Even Hinduism, right? For example, Hinduism. Even they believe in, this, in an ultimate God who then has sub, you know, sub, you know, like deities beneath him. So even in Hinduism, they believe in the ultimate God. They call him Brahma. Right? So if you dig deep into the foundation of every faith, you find the concept of one God. And that's what Islam teaches. They say don't go into the extremes of your religions or your beliefs. Just stick to what is natural for mankind to believe in, which is that there is only one God. So what I'm presenting to you today is nothing new. And this is why you've been agreeing with me so far with regards to you know, some of the things that I've said. But, we, but then you, us as human beings, we have the intellect for a reason. How do we distinguish which religion is correct? How do we... we no, I mean, without study and, and, and stuff or, or we, even... You know, not, humankind tried to fight it out in the past. Agreed, so, but... You know, trying to find who's the best, and, what, but I don't think it's the right way. You know, you need to like find a kind... If you feel comfortable with what you believe in and you feel have this trust and believe that it is the right thing for you, that can be true for you, but you should also be judge free of others that might have a different, you know... I agree, in terms of judging... Just let them be with, because if you see that they are happy with it, why, why do I need to change their happiness about their comfort? You know? and, and for us as Muslims, the reason we do this is because it's out of love for our fellow humans. Because obviously we believe that though they 
feel happy and everything about and, and content with what they're upon, yeah. we know that, or we believe rather, uh, that if they continue on that path, yeah. their eternity is not going to be so good. All right. Well, yeah. Now, however, however, obviously in Islam, Islam teaches that yeah. if you are ignorant of the religion of Islam, you get tested in the hereafter. You don't get judged for disbelieving in it in, the, in, in this world. So. But it is our duty to try and get people to paradise. Yeah. Now, obviously, I'm talking to you about things that, that we, we believe, we believe in the unseen and everything. Yeah. But ultimately, the question I would say is, why do I believe in Allah? Why do I believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet who communicated with God? Yeah. I, you know, uh, directly and indirectly. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a massive claim to make. Yeah. Something that I found... Him. Do this kind yeah. of the same claim, you know? And, and what I keep going back to why Islam is unique is because we have the evidences. Something that cannot be um, sort of passed off as coincidence or just mere belief. Something that you can't really argue unless you move off a path of rationality. So for us, rationality and, and intellect and, and you know, common sense and all, of the, all the stuff that we value, sorry, uh, is what leads us to that leads us to that belief. So we don't have belief and then we study. We study to attain that belief. But I think you have to go. Is that yeah, true? No worries. Well, look, well, thanks for the, thanks nice, for the time. Nice nice, likewise. Up, yeah, cheers. No worries. Have a good life. You as well. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Hey. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, alhamdulillah, we had a, con a nice conversation. Didn't manage to get the, the brother's name. But, subhanAllah. What we can take away from this conversation is that the fitra is something that guides people. Even if they have no idea about Islam, and you speak to them from a fitri perspective, you see them agreeing. And the reason they agree is because that is what they inherently believe. But as our Rasul said that people are born Muslim, and then they are uh, raised to be either Christian, Jews, or fire worshippers. And, and this is what we, we as du'at you know, have to do, try to bring them back to their fitrah. It is not to change who they are as people. This is not the intention of Islam. It is not to change people. It is to keep people as they are, but return them to their fitrah. Return them to that natural belief in La ilaha illallah. And this is why I mentioned to him about, even if you look at all other religions, the base belief is La ilaha illallah, regardless of what name they identify the God as. No, hello. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> no, no, it's so alhamdulillah. Um, no, 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 no. But, uh, so, yeah, well, if you as Muslims, you as Muslims, you have an obligation to study your deen, and to study your deen is not asking a lot, it's to study why you believe in La ilaha illallah is to understand why you believe Muhammad is uh, uh, Rasulullah, Habib Allah. You need to learn these things and then you can go out and give da'wah because that is also your obligation to give da'wah, to bring people to Islam. One of the calamities that we have as Muslims today is that we are surrounded by uh, Muslims and we are, we are the Muslims that are suffering from the hadith, from the prophecy where we are many but yet we are eaten by the, by the non-Muslims. Why? It is not because there is little of us, but because we have preferred the dunya and we have forsaken the akhirah. And we have forsaken the akhirah by not studying our religion as we are obligated to. So brothers and sisters, learn your Islam and you'll be able to touch the fitra of other people and build a real connection. Not, not such, such a, a social connection or acquaintances, but a real connection and inshallah bring them back to Islam. وقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته